Is it worth changing banks? For me, the answer is an emphatic yes. And let me ask you, if you found a bank with no fees that paid your satellite radio subscription, Netflix subscription, and cell phone bill, would you be interested? That effectively is the way changing banks work for me, and I'll explain more in a minute. But first a reminder, this video is for entertainment purposes only. For financial advice, see your accountant or a qualified financial advisor. Next, the terms of banks can change daily. Please confirm for yourself that these programs remain available in your location. And finally, let me clarify, I don't receive anything from anyone, including YouTube, for making these videos. The information is based solely on my experiences and observations and offered in hopes it will be useful to you. I've been using the boiled frog analogy a lot lately to describe myself. That analogy says, if you take a frog and you put it in boiling water, it'll jump out and survive. But if you put a frog in tepid water and turn up the heat slowly, it will stay there until it becomes a boiled frog. And in the realm of banking, that's what I was, a boiled frog. I did business with a credit union for about two decades, but slowly the terms of my deposit accounts changed and I ended up with a checking account that required a minimum balance of $5,000 to avoid fees and was paying, when I closed it, a paltry 0.15% interest. Because of my banking patterns, and perhaps because I'm a bit lazy, I ran an average balance in my checking account of a little more than $11,000. And here's what I earned in interest on the last month I had that bank account. $1.43. In addition to the pitiful interest, service at that credit union declined. I went shopping for a new bank and I have somewhat unique requirements. I'm looking for paper statements, no fees, no minimum balance, free checks, unlimited check writing, and the ability to bank by mail or phone, and the ability to opt out of internet banking. Now, Discover Bank offers a money market account that meets these requirements and pays 3.9% APY, annual percentage yield. I've got a video that talks about the differences between APR and APY, and I'll leave a link in the description. The same balance I had in my credit union account in the Discover account earns $35.58 a month. Uh, and if you take off the $143 I was earning at the credit union, I come out ahead at Discover Bank by $34.15 a month. So how does that pay for my subscriptions every month? Well, I have an XM radio subscription that costs $5. I have Netflix basic service for $10 a month, and I have T-Mobile Connect, which is unlimited talk, text, and 3.5 gigabytes of data for $15 a month. With taxes and fees, the total for those three services is $33.73 a month. You can see that the interest Discover pays me pays for all of those subscriptions. Plus, because there's no minimum balance in the Discover account, I can put some of those funds, some of that $11,000, into a different account that may pay 5% APY annual percentage yield or more, like CFG Bank, which pays 5.12% APY on their high yield money market account. Current rates like these can be found online or for technological dinosaurs like me in magazines like Kiplinger's. If I had that bank balance in a 5% account, the monthly interest payment would be $45 more than what the credit union was paying me. But wait, there's more. Discover has a new account bonus of $150 if you deposit $15,000 and $200 if you deposit $25,000 within 30 days into an online savings account that you could open the same time as the money market account. That effectively pays you to move to a new bank. Now, for consumers who use direct deposit of their paycheck or social security check into their checking or savings account, and people who make a uh, certain required number of debit card transactions a month, there can be even richer rewards. 
For example, check out PNC Bank's virtual wallet, which pays a bonus of up to $400 and can be paired with a high yield savings account that currently pays 4.5% APY. In the end, I opened three new bank accounts, one at a local credit union that has no fees, offers free checks and has no minimum balance, one at a national bank, something like Discover, that offers check writing and a reasonable interest rate, and one at a national bank that paid a high interest rate but had no check writing ability. It took me about half an hour each to open the accounts at the national banks online, and then it took me a little bit more phone time to assure that internet banking was not activated with each of those accounts. The local bank account took me about an hour um, with an in-person visit to the credit union. So with about two hours invested, I got a bonus of $200 from one of the national banks, meaning I was earning about $100 an hour for making the transition. Plus, I get enough interest to pay for two entertainment subscriptions and my cell phone service. For me, hopping out of the water and switching banks has been amply rewarding. If you're a boiled frog like me, the same might apply to you. Finally, let's end on a banking joke. Why did the football coach go in and ask the banker for change for a dollar? Well, he was looking for a new quarterback. Thank you for watching.